Hello and welcome to another Star Citizen podcast with me, Board Gamer, and the lovely Zinya. Say hello, Zinya. Hello, Zinya. Oh, perfect. <laughs> You're such a delight, Zin. <laughs> um, so today we're talking about the Banning Merchantman and uh, sort of like the updates to the ship, the community response to that ship, because we've done a little video um, just going over the Inside Star Citizen that, that looked at it originally. And um, yeah, I want to talk a bit more about that, go over some of that again, and just talk about our thoughts on the Banning Merchantman. Because you know you're going to get some some ranging opinions if it's me and Zin, because uh, Zin hates things that I love and vice versa. <laughs> so the Banning Merchantman, it's a floating marketplace of a ship. It's supposed to be a bit of a cargo hauler, a bit of a trade ship, uh, a place where people can meet up and buy things from shops, sort of like a floating mall as well. Um, not Lots of stuff going on with that. Um, but it, yeah, it's a, it's a floating bazaar. And the ship has certainly kept that. But there's been changes brought to people's attention that maybe they weren't aware of, and we'll talk more about this in a second, um, that they didn't like uh, in the latest sort of update. We got to see the Banner Merchantman in a lot more detail than we had before, and um, the current sort of look for it, and they sort of um, panned around. We saw the exterior, we saw a lot of the interior, and it's still early-ish stages. Um, lots of stuff might change still. The exterior is a bit more locked in, but I mean, again, can change. But the thing is with this ship is that it's been in development since 2013 and it's gone through a lot of evolution and the Banu um, have gone through a lot of evolution since then. So what did you think of the Banu Merchantman now, Zin? I think it looks good. Yeah. I also don't really care that much. <laughs> it's not a ship I'm interested in personally. Yeah. And that's fine. So the Banu as a, as a race and sort of like the Banu Defender and the Banu in general, do you like the look of their stuff or is it sort of like, yeah, it's cool, but again, not for me? Uh, yeah, it's cool, but not for me. I, I like my more techy looking stuff. Rather than the slight, like more organic looking things yeah. that the, the Banu go for. I mean, I, I love the look of it. I love the fact that there's sort of like slightly Geiger-esque in some regards, slightly sort of like um, seashell and sort of um, the, the, that sort of look sometimes. And then sometimes it's like the bones or the innards of like a, a big animal, like a whale. It's, it's got a lot going on. I'm not a massive fan of the way the Banu ships look but i am a massive fan of the banu merchantman and it's one of my um sort of favorite ships on paper so fun functionality least. functionality wise i'm not i'm not the most trendy person it's in i'm not sure if you're aware um i'm, I'm very not stylish. much aware of I, your style and lack thereof i i look at things and art and stuff and i go i don't know what i, I don't know what looks good i don't even know what looks good to me i just look at something and go uh, yeah um, but I did see a lot of memes about the way the Banu Merchantman looked currently. I think Ms. Ms. Merchantman was my favourite meme, just the Banu with the lipstick on. <laughs> but so there, there seems to be a reasonable amount of um, dissent in the community. Maybe it's not, maybe it's a lot less than I think. But uh, some people seem to not like the way the Banu Merchantman looked. And they, and they seem to be surprised with how it looked. So what do you think about that, Sin? We, we talked very briefly before the mm -hmm. podcast and, and you... You, you said some things, which I then said, well, we'll rein that back and be be kinder. Um, so well, what do you think about that? What do you think about um, people not being aware of how the Banning Merchantman uh, has changed since 2013? Shame on them. Like Shame shame on you! <laughs> the Banu Merchantman has had significant changes done to it, at least in 2017. That was yes, five so that years ago. I'll agree that its nose has probably gotten wider since then, but... Even in 2017, it did not look like that like initial spiky Banu Merchantman that people seem to want it to look like. Yeah, so original concept drawing in 2013 was a bit different. The Banu were a bit different mm -hmm. then. This, it was a lot more spiky, almost evil looking ship, um, trying to look as alien as possible. Um, um, it evolved and even in 2014 when you saw the rear of the ship the rear of the ship actually um, makes the ship look a lot more in line with the current iteration we've got of the Banu Merchantman mm -hmm. um, but 2017 they they made the Banu Defender they sort of concepted and well, I say concepted they um, sort of refined what they wanted the Banu to look like and the Defender was um, sort of the gold standard for that or at least the sort of um, the prototype for the rest of the Banu ships that will be made and um, that's obviously 
evolved the way the Banu Merchantments looked, and we got some new concept art of the Banu Merchantment in 2017 as well, and it looks very similar to what we've got now. So people being surprised by the, the way the Banu Merchantment looks. If you've been keeping up with development, probably shouldn't have been that surprised. Um, we did get to see it at different angles, and actually in a built state, which is different from a picture, obviously. Um, and I think a lot of uh, the memes I've seen of like its weird face and like it it's being the head of a sheep and and lots of other silly things um are because it's a you see the banning much at a weird angle and it's got obviously it distorts it's the way its nose looks you get that with any ship even like the super beautiful ships that the eight ninety jump stuff you can um make it look like a pair of hair straighteners or something like that's actually more the redeemer. <laughs> But you get my meaning. You, yeah, you yeah. You make it... Uh, what, actually, the, what, the 890 Jump looks like a, a, a PlayStation. <laughs> yeah? Yes. Yeah, it's something like that. It just You can you can meme with anything like that. I, um, I'm not in love with the way it looks, but I do like it. Um, I think it looks alien. I think it looks interesting. I'm more in love with what the ship does. So I don't understand any descent with the way it looks beyond, well, it's going to evolve a bit more. I think that um, we've been sort of aware that the Man in Merchantman was going to look like that for several years now, for at least five. Does it look different from the concept, the original concept? Yes. Are you allowed to say you don't like it as much? Yes, that's fine. A lot of ships that CIG have concepted and then eventually brought out, that almost all of them have changed in some way. Like, you've, you've got to expect change. Yes, but because this has been changed over, what, nine years this original concept 2013 built on the old system that Cal Imperium had done for ships where they didn't build out the sort of concept the outside and, and block out the outside to work out how big a ship should be they went we want this ship to do this and drew a picture of it that was all the Banu Merchantman was for many years mm. um so their new system obviously they they um work out exactly how big a ship should be at least reasonably make sure that the components fit inside make sure they um it's sort of like going to be built within a much more timely manner rather than nine years later still in development sort of thing so it, it's an interesting one and it's one of the early ships which is i i think why it's a bit of a unique case but yeah no, i know what you mean all the ships are going to change from concept of course they are and i think that's a fair thing to say i've just realized something i don't like about it mm. the stubby wings i mean they, they they sort of fold out they come out or they expand out i just don't like the way they look i don't know why but well, I'm not going to make a Reddit post about it. <laughs> but I will make a video about it, apparently. So, yeah, no no spiky nose. I did like the spikiness of it. The thing is, you could argue that um, maybe that's like a custom one that the Banu has. Yeah. And that's that's been, like, modified and added to over the years of ownership sort of thing. You know. I, th I, th I think the people that have bought the ship uh, may disagree yeah. with maybe that's mis-selling <laughs> it. <laughs> uh, however, that ship originally was $250 when Cloud Imperium sold it. It's now $600 they're selling it mm -hmm. for. And I think it could go as high as, or almost as high as $1,000 by the time it's flyable. Yeah. Obviously, silly prices for ships. Um, get it in game. So just get it in game if you like it. Um, unless you've got a load of disposable income, you're like, you know what? You know what? Somehow I sold my crypto before it crashed. And now I've got loads of, loads of money. Um, so maybe then. But uh, you can get all this stuff in game, so why not? Let's move on to the interior. Let's have a bit of a chat about that. Um, obviously, this wasn't as evolved as the exterior, as in this is much more sort of white box um, and uh, much more subject to change. So, got a large bridge, four command chairs there, or four chairs there. I say command chairs. No, no captains in Banu ships. So, how do you know what you're doing? How do you know where you're going? Hmm? But there, there's someone going to be in charge, obviously. You'd have thought you don't so. Just go. Just turn up and go, well, this is my ship. Oh, no, 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 we don't do that here. <laughs> I mean, it's obviously going to be a captain on your ship, or at least someone in charge. Maybe that would just be the primary pilot's chair. They, they choose where you go, don't they? Mm. But then you've got um, the co-pilots and um, two seats behind them, which don't do look after sort of the remote turrets. Something that characterises the ship is large spaces, large empty areas, high ceilings. Like they said, it's because the Banu were taller than um humans so their ships will be taller to accommodate and also other races as well going to be on their ship they're going to be taller yeah so b build it to the largest scale i suppose so that everyone can use it mm -hmm. um mixed bathrooms uh, things like that i think on was it the the Raylan? i think that has um toilets for multiple species um that are shared 
the ship's relatively sensible. It's got like escape pods and suits. Um, it's sort of near nearby the bridge. Um, they've got the uh, they shut off the turret room. So, what did you think of this this turret room, Sin? Um, so it's like this isolated space with a spotlight in the middle. Overly excessive. I I think that's supposed to be what the banner merchant's about. It is overly excessive. It's supposed to show off sort of like wealth, um, and they they sort of value sort of empty space. Um, did you think it was sort of like overly excessive in the point that it become less functional because of that? Yeah. Because I suppose you were running to the turret. If that was my ship, all that space mm. would end up as storage. Just crates everywhere. You just walk in and it'd be like like just rubbish everywhere. Not rubbish. They're, they're items that you have yet to find a use for. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd just be like, why the hell is this in the turret room? <laughs> Nowhere <laughs> else to put it. It's not a turret room. It's a storage room that has a turret. Yeah. I, I thought it was interesting. So that sort of like the nearby area of the sanctuary. So you've got this large sort of sanctuary, which goes onto this large um, sort of living area with um seating and sort of social area but the sanctuary is sort of like a shrine area for prayer and sort of worship of like profit and good deals and things like that now i'd like to repurpose that in my banu merchantman these things are cool for setting law and and Mm. making stuff feel more authentic for sure but once you've gone past it three times i'm like you with the i wish i could turn this into storage area i'd use this for a totally different purpose what would you use the little area for? A uh, little armory, probably. Because I like the idea of having the Banning Merchantman as a, like a Q-ship or um, an, an assault ship. So pirates attack it, thinking it's a merchant ship, and you're actually a ship of war. Oh, you're a, oh, what they called, sleeper, a sleeper merchantman. Sleeper merchantman. Yeah, yeah like, you like sleeper cars, where you, they look mm. like absolute trash, but they will just beat you in a race. Yeah, that's that's what I want. So Q, Q ships are designed to be able to fight, but I suppose th- this would be more sort of like internally, it would have a lot of marines and more access to, to that sort of thing. What do you trade in? I trade in pain. <laughs> War and pain. So yeah, I, I thought that was an interesting choice. I mean, yeah, it does help set the scene um, for the Banu, and I'm looking forward to visiting other people's merchantmen um, because of that. But I don't think some of these areas will have a huge amount of use. I think that's my worry anyway. Maybe they will. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, what did you think of the med bays in? It's uh, unique. Pretty cool. Got your goo beds. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I thought it was interesting. I want to know sort of what tiers the, the beds are. Is one of them or two of them tier one? Are they just tier two and three? Um, you're going to be able to respawn here um, if they're tier two, which at least one of them will be. I like the idea of um, good tier med bays on ships as large as this. It just sort of makes sense. and. Uh, I like the idea of seeing how these goo beds will, will look like animation wise once they're in use by someone. Let's move on to sort of like the, the hangar control area. So there was, uh, I assume you can control this from the bridge as well, but there was like a little hangar. And we know that there's a hangar that Clan Imperium wanted to put into the Banu Merchantman, which this appears to be, that will fit the Banu Defender and ships up to a similar size. So you'll be able to have guests flying on to your ship landing, not just having to land your Banu Merchantman at. Um, points of interest and having pe- or, or people directly dock with you i thought this was pretty cool do you think people are gonna use this for like a hangar for much smaller ships like have a load of dragonflies in there so you can swarm people or do you think it will get used more for purpose maybe your escorts maybe having visitors come along to trade i don't know but i, I kind of like the idea of people on dragonflies acting like little drones <laughs> yeah just loads of them you can have loads of them from that <laughs> you um, just open up your hangar bay and like all these dragonflies are bzz, bzz. Well, that's what you want to do with the I caterpillar. Don't go bzz, but yeah. The caterpillar. Well, you can you can have a, a a thing that all of your crew have to buzz when they're on them. <laughs> yes. Only yellow um yellow jacket dragonflies, and uh, you have to buzz when you're using them while on comms. They they talked about like staff elevators and crew elevators and guest elevators. So it, th- it seems that there's rather than one elevator that only certain people have access to certain floors based on your like clearance. They just went well, put a load of different elevators in. That's what it seems. I mean, it's a big ship. It is a big ship. Um, You do need a lot of movement between areas. I just thought it was weird that they sort of had these separated into staff, crew, guest uh, elevator. But I suppose you do only want the guests to be able to get to the the areas that they'll they want to trade at. So mm. what the the sort of conference room and the the uh the sort of marketplace. So I just thought it was an interesting choice. So talking about areas that I don't think will get used much. There's a conference room which is great if you're running an org or you want to have some social experiences or whatever. But 
I don't think it's going to have a huge amount of function. Like, you can sit there with a load of people and chat about stuff. Or maybe it will. Maybe it will get... Maybe people will use it like an 890 jump. Maybe I'm being sort of... Um, not being fair to it. Like you said, I think um, orgs are going to use it more. Mm -hmm. I feel a lot of this stuff exists on this ship for law purposes more than anything else. And a bit of RP as well. Yeah. And I, I, I'm not going to say this is what they should do because... I don't really care that much. I'm not going to buy a merchantman, but I kind of feel like you should be able to repurpose the rooms because as humans, we're probably not going to use half of those rooms for their intended purposes. Yeah, I'd like to see expand modularity to be able to change more. Yeah, for sure. However, if if there was ever like a, a mission maybe where you have to uh, assist a, a Banu merchantman with actual Banu on them, like one day in the mm -hmm. future, this this is all just hypothetical but probable uh, then yeah you you would ex you would expect all these rooms and you would expect the banu to be using them for their intended purposes because that's why they were there I, I suppose it goes back to you want star citizen to be an authentic experience not not necessarily realistic because it is a game and you want gamified systems but you want to feel like you're part of the universe and that's the reason for having no loading screens when you're going to planets, the seamless nature of it. I'm actually travelling from, from space, which takes time, to a planet. I go to the city, there's no loading screen, and then I travel on public transport around. Yes, mm. that can take time, but it is an authentic experience, which makes me feel like I'm in space and in a universe. And these rooms and these ships are built to aid that authenticity. Yeah. Sometimes I just want function. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, talking about something that might have a bit more function, VIP quarters. Yep. These are massive, sort of lovely sort of rooms. And hopefully that will enable us to do VIP transport missions in the future, uh, stuff like that. I mean, again, it's a little theory crafting. They've talked about VIP missions before for the, the 600i, the 890 jump, things like that. Um, but hopefully we'll be able to do that with trade delegates and things like that. Otherwise, these, these rooms won't have much use. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. But they probably will on the NPC versions. So the NPC versions are likely to be more populated. Maybe it, maybe ours will as well. Maybe, maybe they've got some plans for, for the Banner Merchantman, I'm not aware. Like, it sort of operates on its own a bit. Yeah, that would be nice. And you sort of land and it just does stuff. It's just like, yeah, 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 some people come along. They're, they're moving around. They want to go here. Maybe they just accept missions really easily to, to move people around. I don't know. Um, there's a lot of stuff they could do with Star Citizen that would be pretty cool. I think the main purpose of the ship, though, at least for me, um, is that market mall area. Two levels of sort of shops... Do you like the idea of running your own shops on a ship? Like, because you're about to have NPCs running these stores for you, and you can have lots of different types of store. I mean, it'd be kind of cool. Again, I think it'll have more use in systems like Pyro. Where there's no infrastructure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like the only stores you are going to get are going to be a bit dodgy. Yeah, I, I think it excites me, the idea of landing at points of interest or floating around in space and people being really excited to see a merchantman turn up. Because they're like, they're wanting gear, they're wanting kids, they want to see what you've got. Mm. And maybe you've got some rarities. Maybe I'm really excited when I see a merchantman and we just look like loads of merchants get together and we all do the trade together. What you got in your shop, mate? Maybe there will be eventually NPC merchantmen that fly around. And I'm kind of like taking influence from Lost Ark here. They, they fly around, but like there'll be a certain merchantman that have like a really rare item on it. Yeah. So I, I really like that idea. Um, it'll be interesting to know how Klein and Pym want to do things like that. Um, because um, if they do have something like that, will it be that the Dynamic Universe just sort of uh, simulates that? Or is it going to be that it goes to a place and then it picks that item up? Um, is it going to go, well, this Banu Merchantman's route is going to go across half the galaxy and just go everywhere and then go back around in a loop? Oh, that'd be cool, yeah. Yeah, I think it genuinely will be. And I think that they've got the, that Dynamic Universe sim, that the Quanta system, that is the sort of thing it supports really well and it sort of plans to do. Um, and then you'd maybe have some named Banu merchantmen flying around that you're like, this guy's got some really cool stuff. They stock really great things and you want to try and get it. And then, well, they might become famous, but someone might destroy it eventually or capture it. Mm. It's just so cool stuff that Star Citizen lends itself to and this like massive scope. I'm really excited by the idea of having a market on board a ship. I mean, I love the Kraken. I love the Privateer, but this is just, it's more bearable and more sort of, controllable the banner merchantman i can sort of like i know what how i'm going to make profit from it personally i'm going to be doing a bit of cargo hauling i'm going to do be doing a bit of um floating marketing and going around some interesting systems hopefully hopefully not get murdered and i like the idea of having lots of different shops and them being sort of mostly autonomous after you put an npc in them and then just select their stock cargo hold 
big old cargo hold, but it's sort of like people are uh, upset that it's smaller than sort of like the original what they expected. Again, as, as Zin was saying earlier, these ships sort of change and evolve, but they're still true to their original purpose. And for the most part, I mean, a lot. I feel like a lot of people are going to be putting, putting down, what about the Ares Ion? It's not, it doesn't snip anymore. That's how I would say it. <laughs> And I'd say, actually, you're right. I do want the Ares Ion to snipe. I don't want it to be a one-shot kill because obviously that's one of the reasons they changed it in the current sort of um, iterations and because you just can't have that. It wouldn't be fun. Communal crew quarters. I don't like communal quarters. I don't like the idea of sleeping in a room uh, with other people, especially that many other people in a big circle. But you get a cool little pod thing with a light. It's it's weird. It was weird. <laughs> this room was memed on a lot, sort of like saying it's Jedi Council-ish. Star Citizen has taken influences from every sci-fi um, series, ship, um, art, work, book, film. Um, it's sort of this hodgepodge, this massive melting pot of a load of different artists' ideas and influences um, all coming together. And uh, I love it for it, but you do see things that are, you meme, but your meme is too too true to life. It's too real. Community crew callers makes sense. Obviously, you need need crew on these ships, uh, especially staff to to sort of uh, look after those shops. It's in. Hmm. When it gets flyable, what what price do you think the ship could be? Nine hundred. Nine hundred. I okay. think your your estimate of about a grand is probably good. Right. I mean, Obviously, it was two hundred and fifty, but it was also a much smaller ship, if I remember correctly. What, mm, I, I'm not sure if that's true. Uh, but it's a much more concepty ship. So the metrics have changed. So people will argue this in different ways. The metrics changed of how they wanted to do SCU mm. and what was viable, the way that they built out ships changed. So I don't think it's really fair to compare it to the original, original concept and the sizing of that. Because um, some people will say, yeah, it's bigger. Some people will say it's significantly smaller technically. It, it's it's a weird one. But over its evolution, the ship has physically got larger. That's something to, to remember. And it's true to its original function, which is floating marketplace and bazaar, also doing cargo hauling. Um, I got I got a load of Banu Merchantmen's when they were three hundred fifty dollars. I'm sort of happy with them. Um, might might be for giveaways in the future, maybe. I might just keep a load of them myself because you know I feel like I can fly nine different Banu Merchantmen's simultaneously. Yeah, but it could be like your business. You could you could franchise. You know. Oh my god, <laughs> that's a great idea. I can rent them out for different memes. You could you could have your your marketplace with a hologram in the middle doing our Kelto advert. That's a good point, actually. I didn't even talk about the hologram. So, yeah, one of the things the mall's got is this big hologram in the middle, and which is going to be able to be set to sort of advertise different things in the shops. But you should watch Mine and Sin's Kelto ad. Um, in fact, Zin, just drop the Kelto ad right in here. <laughs> Why not? It's my video, isn't it? Just damn, bam. I'm editing it. It's our, our video. It's, it's your edit. That's, that's not what you want. I might put it at the end. It's perfect. And that's what we should go now. We should go to the end. Uh, I'm interested in seeing how the Bandit Merchant evolves more and the way devs respond to criticism and um, sort of feedback on the Bandit Merchant. I'm expecting that we will see a lot more of it at CitizenCon and later in the year. I think that maybe we could see the Bandit Merchant at the end of next year if the resources are there to build it out. That's my current theory on that. Do you think that's fair, Zin, or do you think... Pfft, estimate why are you deciding when things are released the yeah, cit can't even do it <laughs> uh, yeah fair point i think end of year maybe uh next year sorry maybe um it's yeah i i know it's a big ship and it's going to take a lot of effort to to develop but i'm i thought it would have been a little bit further along than it is but you, what do i know how many ships have i designed eh well you've probably done a couple in your life it's really badly designed no, i told space. you before the, in the other podcast we did i don't like building ships you don't like building ships. That is true. That's when we talked about Starfield. And you should watch that video as well. Anyway, I will leave you with, I don't know, Kelto ads and NordVPN ads and things like that. Um, thank you very much for watching. Very much appreciated. Tell me what you think about the Banner Merchant in the comments below. Do you like the way it's looking now? Uh, do you hate it? Are you original concept backer? Did you only buy the, the, the ship because of the way it looks now? Um, how much do you think it's going to be the ship? Whatever. Tell me about your love or hate of the Banu Merchantman and the memes that you have seen. Say goodbye, Zin. Goodbye, Zin. Perfect. Oh, what a pleasure. What a pleasure it is to do a podcast with you. See you later, guys. Take care. I'll see you in the verse.
Here at Kelto, we have one simple goal to bring you the items you need quickly and easily. We've got everything you need. Food, drinks, toys for the little ones, guns for the wife, all inside one store. Kelto. Just walk inside to begin your astronomical savings. Using the latest in Moby technology and machine learning, we know exactly what you've picked up and have already charged you. Want something hot and ready to go? How about hot dogs, nachos, or burritos? Kelto. We've even got the latest in Gemini ballistic weapons like the Gemini F-55 LMG, featuring an explosive rate of fire that tops over 1,000 rounds rounds per minute. It's the best light machine gun you can get in a convenience store. Looking for something a bit smaller for the kids, we also carry the Gemini LH86 pistol, perfect for those small hands. So come down to Kelto today for quality products at low prices. Hello, it's me, the Queen. It's my Platinum Jubilee this year, and safety and security are paramount. Lots of people ask me why we need a Queen and Lord VPN. I defend the world with my scepter and crown, preventing those who do it harm from carrying out their evil deeds, channeling the power of NordVPN.com forward slash board gamer and my divine right, I can overcome any obstacle, and so can you, by using the links below to get great deals and better internet accessibility, security, and encryption acidosity. I don't know what that word was that I was trying to say, but I am the queen! I will never be defeated! Just like NordVPN.com sword slash board gamer! That wasn't the queen at all. It was me. It was Board Gamer. I've got to say this at the end, actually, now, just in case someone says I'm impersonating the Queen. Tried to get her, but she was too busy. She says got, like, a busy weekend or something. Every month, we have a ship giveaway. For June, we're giving away the newly released RSI Scorpius Heavy Fighter. This is a two-seater X-Wing-styled ship with a powerful loadout and a turret that can move from the top to the bottom of the ship, giving it a much better range of firing arcs. To be in for a chance of winning that, comment on any of my videos made during this month. More details in the description below. Please also consider supporting the channel by becoming a member with the join button under my videos, or becoming a Patreon, or even donating with thanks button or donations in the descriptions below. Star Citizen is getting more and more flesh on its bones, and there's always news coming out, and we love to cover that, and we're only able to do that because of all of you watching, and all the amazing people that go the extra mile. Whether it's commenting, sharing our videos, chucking money at us, or whatever, thank you so much. I hope you have a great June, please take care, and I'll see you in the verse.